Let's work out some examples of significance testing. So in our first example, we're going to measure the sulfate concentration at a local reservoir. And we're going to do that over nine consecutive days. So we have nine samples. And over those days, we get some measurements. We take the sample mean, and we get 6.1 milligrams per liter. And we also know the variance to be 0.81 milligrams per liter squared. So our question is, is the concentration significantly different from the baseline, which we know to be mu is 5.4 milligrams per liter. And we're gonna set the significance level in this problem to 0 0.01. So since we have one data set with a known variance, we will use a one sample Z test. First, we calculate the Z statistic. So that's gonna take root N times the sample mean minus the true mean, Divide it by the standard deviation, that's root 9 times 6.1 minus 5.4 over root 0.81, ultimately 2.33. From there, we calculate the p-value, so that's the probability that under the null, okay, and in this case, we're kind of taking the null to be that it's Gaussian with mean, mu, and uh, variance 0.81. Under the null, what's the probability we saw a a Z statistic this extreme or more. Okay, so that's going to be twice the phi function evaluated at minus the absolute value of Z. So it's going to be twice this phi of minus 2.33. And in MATLAB, we can evaluate that just by calling norm CDF of minus 2.33. If we put all that together, we get 0 0.02. Okay, now since the p value here, is greater than 0 0.01, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. And, you know, informally, the conclusion we would draw would be that the concentration is not elevated. Okay, so, I mean, it might be elevated. We don't know what the um, entire process is, but just by applying this statistical test, we don't find significance at a level of 0 0.01, so we fail to reject the null. And that's you know, from this test perspective, a way of saying the concentration is not elevated. Let's stay in the same example, and now we'll say we don't know the variance, and we measure it to be 0.36 milligrams per liter squared. We're going to ask the same question, and I'm just going to change the significance level just so that we um, get used to trying out some different levels. So we're asking, is the concentration significantly different from the baseline of 5.4? at a level of 0 0.05 this time. So since we have one data set with an unknown variance, we're gonna use a one sample t-test. The other thing I'd kind of point out is that since there are fewer than 30 samples, this makes sense. If there were more than 30 samples, you could just use a z-test and that would also be fine. Even if the variance were unknown, you would just treat the sample variance like the true variance. But in any case, we'll calculate here the t-statistic. That's gonna be root n times the sample mean minus the true mean divided by the square root of the sample variance. So that's going to be root 9 times 6.1 minus 5.4 over the square root of 0.36. So that's going to be 3.5. To calculate the p-value, we call the CDF of a t-distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom for the minus absolute value of the t-statistic. So here that's going to be minus 3.5. And in MATLAB, we can work out this CDF by calling the tcdf function and plugging in the value minus 3.5 and also 8 because that's n minus 1 and here we had 9 samples so n minus 1 is 8 we get 0 0.008 here and since the p-value in this case is less than alpha which is 0 0.05 we are going to reject the null hypothesis and Informally, the way we can think about that is we're really saying that concentration is elevated. We think it is elevated at a significance level of 0 0.05. Okay, let's come to a different scenario now. So what we're doing is testing a new blood pressure drug, and we are going to have a control group that's going to have 27 patients, and they're going to get a placebo, and an experimental group which is going to get the new drug that's with 25 patients, so we record the sample mean of the blood pressure. I'm not putting units here because this is already a pretty crowded setup. So we have 2.1 one case and 2.02 uh, .02 in the other case, okay? And from prior studies, we believe that the variances in the control and experimental groups in this kind of setting are known, and the values are going to be 0 0.01 and 0 0.02. 
okay, for control and experimental respectively. Does this drug lower cholesterol at a significant level of 0 0.05? So what we're gonna do is take two data sets with known variants, and we're gonna apply a two sample Z test. And so we're going to say, here's the Z statistic. We're gonna take the difference here, right? So we're taking the difference and we are just plugging in the variances divided by the size of each sample, N1 and N2. So we're gonna get 2.1 minus 2.02 .02 over the square root of 0 0.01 over 27 plus 0 0.02 over 25. That's gonna be 2.34, okay? And so the p-value here, again, since we're using a z-test, we're gonna use the phi function of negative absolute value of z times the whole thing times two. We're gonna look up this phi function in MATLAB. It's just the CDF of a normal distribution. So we're just gonna plug in norm CDF of minus 2.34 for that. And ultimately two times that is gonna be 0 0.02. And so since our p-value for this case is less than our alpha, which is 0 0.05, we're going to reject the null hypothesis and informally, the conclusion we can draw is that at this significance level, the drug does lower cholesterol. So what we're going to do next is we're going to stay in the same scenario, but now we're going to change it so that the variances are unknown and they're measured. So we're measuring the control and experimental variances. They're going to be 0.31 and 0.28. And we also believe that the true underlying variance is equal across the control and experimental groups. And so we're asking the same question, does the drug lower cholesterol at a significant level of 0 0.05? And so these are two data sets with unknown and equal variants. Okay, and so we're gonna apply a two sample t-test. And so what we're gonna do first is estimate the pooled sample variant. So we're gonna to put together these variances, n1 minus one times vn1 of one, plus n2 minus one times vn2 of two, over n1 plus n2 minus two. That's how we put together the variances, the sample variances to estimate the overall variance. So that's gonna be 26 times 0 0.31 plus 24 times 0 0.28 over 27 plus 25 minus two. Overall, that gives us 0 0.30. Our T statistic in this case, we're gonna calculate in a similar way. So we're gonna take the difference of the sample means divide by the square root of the pooled sample variance times one over N1 plus one over N2. And so putting that together, 2.1 minus 2.02 .02 over 0.3 times one over 27 plus one over 25. Overall, that gives us 0.53. And if we plug in to get the p-value, we're dealing with a t distribution with N1 plus N2 minus two degrees of freedom. And if we plug in minus absolute value of t, we get two times f of 50. And that's going to be, so it's f of t 50 of minus 0.53. That's going to give us um, something we can work out in MATLAB to be 0.6. And since this p-value is way above the significance level of 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we say that this is a plausible observation under the null. And that means informally that we think the drug does not lower cholesterol at this significance level. Okay, and that is it.